Hey guy welcome back to our channel, so how you doing all, hope you all doing great, so in this video we are gonna see, what if Naruto was was emperor of west element empire. Kanoha bashing. And this is part 1, and if you want more then make sure to hit that like button, share and subscribe and make sure press bell icon for latest updates. Let's get in the video. The continent of the elemental countries is larger than most people realized, as it was once a much larger base of land than the maps today would show, and the part that was not shown was in a whole different league in every way. You see, all of the elemental countries are on eastern side of the continent as a whole, and that just passed Earth country to the west. It was a massive wall with an even more massive territory. This wall that held back the violence of the west, its people, weaponry and power that made anything in the east look pale in comparison. No one from the Kages of the Shinobi village to the very daimyos ruling over their domains, even Ichiha Madara himself, dared not go over to the west and draw the attention of even one of the war-hardened factions there. Beyond this massive wall, a wall that was forged during the time of the Sage of Six Paths by the Sage himself, were warlords, rogue samurai, shinobi. Shinobi clans, assassins, and even demons that all fought to protect their own individual territories from rivals. It had been the reason the Sage of Six Paths had made the wall in the first place, as he knew that eventually the East would be consumed by the powers of the West without the wall, and years later the Uzumaki clan and Whirlpool was commissioned by all of the many feudal lords in the East to use their mastery in the sealing arts to cover the wall with seals to prevent its deterioration. Before his death, the Sage of Six Paths had made it known that even if the powerful beings in the West divided, they could easily spill their conflict into the East, and wiping out half of elemental countries before a plan to counter them could even be thought up. Of course memories of such warnings fade away through the passage of time, arrogance clouds the judgment of those in charge, and the leaders in the East become consumed in the ways of stupidity and the belief they are invincible. Along with the fading of warnings, is the evolution of the world itself, shaking it to the very foundation, and a single incident that would bring about the very catalyst for such evolution to happen. And that single incident came on a day when Ichiha Sasuke defected from Kanoha to join Orochimaru, but failed to accomplish his goal, thanks to one Yuzumaki Naruto, and was brought back to Kanoha. The two had fought each other in a brutal battle in a fight to the end, as Naruto was on a mission to bring Sasuke back to the leaf, and the Ichiha Zone was to slay his pursuer for greater power. Naruto had suffered two chitteris to his chest, but endured the lethality of the jutsu and the pure agony that came along with the rest of his injuries from the battle to return Sasuke to Kanoha. The blonde Yuzumaki had hoped his actions would prove to the village he wasn't a monster, that he wasn't the QB, and prove himself worthy of their recognition. He was sadly mistaken. Flashback. Yuzumaki Naruto. It is the decision of the Hokage, the councils, and the clan heads of Kanoha that you are to be banished immediately from the village, said Tsunade, while she scowled at Naruto, who had barely had a chance to even heal from his injuries and still had bandages covering parts of his body to further prove it. What? Why? said Naruto seeing the female Hokage scowl more at him. Why? Why? You injured the Achiha you little demon shit. Said Hamura spoke this time while Naruto got angry himself. And what about what he did to me? I took two chitteris to the chest. Not one, but two of them, and all with the intent to kill from that prick, so he could go to Orochimaru. At least with my attacks, they were to disable, and I carried that asshole back to the village in my condition. Said Naruto before Tsunade slammed her fist down onto the table. Silence. I've had it up to here with your annoying voice brat. I'm tired of your whining and your excuses for what happened in this mission. You have until the rest of the day to get out of the leaf village and if you ever return to Konoha. You will be killed on sight. No excuses. Said Tsunade coldly while Naruto looked betrayed at her words, while the councils and the clan head smirked in victory. So that's how it is, huh? I bust my ass for you, these pricks, and the rest of the teams in this village, in the hope of getting the respect I deserve. Instead, you blame me for doing my job and banish me. Fine. Go ahead. I hope you all choke on this little victory of yours and when you do. Don't expect me to save your ass, said Naruto before taking off his shinobi headband and chucking it at Tsunade with it barely missing her head. And smashing into the Yandai maze picture behind her before they both fell to the floor with the glass on the picture shattering. You demon brat. Arrest him. Said Kahara before being forced back into her chair by a wave of killer intent. Just try it. I dare you. Before I get arrested, I promise every single shinobi sent after me will be maimed and scarred for life, said Naruto before walking towards the door. Naruto. One last thing. Hand me back my necklace, said Tsunade seeing Naruto stop at the door and glaring at her. This isn't yours anymore Hokage-sama. As I recall, this was lost to you in a fair bet, and it will be a cold day in hell before this become yours again, said Naruto before walking out of the office with Tsunade, narrowing her eyes at him while he left. Then flashback. Naruto made it back to his apartment without hassle. 
probably because the boy had used the more discreet alleys, stayed in the shadows, and avoided every person in Kanoha altogether. Of course, his apartment had been trashed by the looks of things, which wasn't really new in his mind, as it happened from time to time, and moved to the hidden panel underneath his destroyed bed to remove his few valuables the villagers couldn't take from him. Some spare clothing that wasn't orange, knowing it wasn't healthy to wear it at this point, and Hinata's spare medical cream he hadn't used. Applying some of the medical cream to his body, Naruto had taken away the pain of his more annoying injuries, the QB had yet to handle himself. Bagging everything, the Yuzumaki turned to walk out of the apartment and out of Konoha for good. The Jinchuriki was not even out the door when Naruto bumped into the one person even he didn't expect to see before leaving. Hayuga Hinata. Is it true? Said Hinata while staring into Naruto's eyes I the hopes it wasn't. Yeah. I beat the crap out of the Acha. Let it all out. Insult me. Slug me. Get it over with, but hurry up and be done with it, said Naruto before seeing Hinata begin to cry, then surprisingly run up and hug him while sobbing into his chest. I don't care about the Acha. I care about you. Is it true that you're being banished from the leaf? Forever. Under the pain of death upon returning. Said Hinata while she once again looked into Naruto's eyes and saw how shocked he was that someone actually cared about him instead of Sasuke. Yeah. It's true. I've got until the end of today to leave before they send out their shinobi to kill me. Though I suspect they'll do it before then out of spite for me. For what I am, said Naruto before shutting up and Hinata knew why. You mean the vessel of QP? Said Hinata while Naruto stiffened and then looked her dead in the eyes with an intense seriousness that made the Hayuga girl shiver. Who told you that? Said Naruto knowing the law while never really enforced could be used against her for the kind nature Hinata was known for. The Ashi would probably perform the execution himself. I've always known Naruto come. My father told me at a very young age in the hopes of removing my feelings for you. I admit after hearing you were the QB Jinchuriki was scared at first because he told me stories of the QB being a ruthless demon, but my mother. My mother took me away to talk in private and called my father an idiot. She said you weren't a demon. Just the container. She said a Jinchuriki is like a cup being filled with water. The cup only holds water but isn't water itself. So, I watched you for a while and wished to see who you really were, said Hinata while smiling slightly at him with Naruto being shocked at her words. And? Said Naruto seeing Hinata smile more gently hugged him this time. You are just the cup that holds the water that is QB. You have done so much and been given so little in return for everything you've done for this village. I just wish I had told you sooner how I felt about you. How much I care. How much I wanted to be by your side to help you endure everything. And how much. How much I love you, said Hinata, while Naruto slowly wrapped his arms and for the first time in his life. The young Yuzumaki felt joy fill his soul. I wish I had known sooner too. It wasn't your fault Hinata-chan. I've been too stupid and blind to notice your feelings and for that I'm sorry. Do you forgive me? Said Naruto with a high uga nodding her head while feeling his whiskered face rub against hers and loved it. Only if you forgive me, said Hinata and then kissed him on the lips, knowing it would probably be for the first and last time. I can do that. Though you better get out of here before someone else less friendly arrives to find you here, said Naruto seeing the Hayuga girl nod. Be safe wherever you go Naruto-kun and know that no matter what happens. My heart will always belong to you, said Hinata before she quietly left the room. Better to love and lost than never love at all, said QB at last within Naruto's mind. I was wondering when you talk to me again furball. So what do you want? Come to gloat at being weak. Come to gloat at how I didn't finish off my enemy like you would have in my place. Thought Naruto while physically moving to get out of the village before anyone else knew he was gone. No kit. I am here to talk about. Your future. Our future, said QB seeing the boy was so shocked that he physically stopped in the deserted alley. What about it? Considering how things are right now, mostly because of you I might add. I have no future. Thought Naruto with the QB sighing. I know kit. At first, I hated you like I did everyone else, but then I saw your heart and your soul for what it truly was before I realized my foolishness. I didn't want to be in a vessel who used my power and called it his own. You are nothing like those fools in Kanoha and only used my power for a cause greater than yourself. I never had access to my previous vessels like I did you, but I knew enough that they never called on my power and I respected them for that fact. When you first demanded my power in order to save yourself from that ravine, I was impressed by your boldness and yet disgusted by the order given. It wasn't until later when you used my powers. Only as a last resort against your opponents did I realize you weren't going to abuse what was given, and it was at that point. I knew you were worthy, said QB while sensing Naruto was once again surprised. Wow. I guess I should be honored by this QB, but. What does this have to do with our future and living without a home? Thought Naruto with the QB smirking. There is always a home kit. 
we just have to find it first. Given the nature of things as they are today, it's clear such a place is not on this side of the world, and therefore. We must look on other side, said QP drawing more confusion from Naruto. What do you mean? Thought Naruto while QP shook his head. I'll tell you another time Kit. Right now, we must move, and move silently before the leaf decides to move ahead of schedule and letting you leave, said QP with Naruto nodding in agreement and move to get out of the village, before stopping again to see the other rookies talking to each other with Guy's team. I knew it. Naruto is the QP. I knew there was something off about him, and this is the proof in the pudding, said Kiba with the others nodding in agreement. I think I believed him in defying fate. Now I feel like a fool for believing the QP and his trickery, said Niji scowling with anger. If I see him, he's going to be used for target practice, and I'm going to make him suffer, said Tenten with her scroll filled with weapons at the ready. Such an unyouthful creature the QP was back then and now to deceive us all for so long. It will bring me great honor to defeat him in battle, said Lee being his usual self. I knew that Baka was unnatural. Now I see he's really the QP. The next time I see him, I'm going to punch his tiny brain out of his skull and rip out his guts for what he did to Sasuke-kun, said Sakura with Ino agreeing to help. The Hokage says he's been officially banished from Konoha. We just have to be patient in the hopes the demon is dumb enough to return or hide out in a nearby country so we can have a shot at him, said Shikamaru, while seeing the others nod in agreement. You sicken me Shikamaru. All of you do, said Tamari appearing behind Shikamaru and glaring daggers at them all. What are you talking about? Said Shikamaru before being punched harshly in the face by Tamari and soon saw her siblings flanking her position. You heard me you baka. For someone with a genius brain, you sure are stupid and lack the perception to see the truth. My own brother here is like Naruto. My youngest brother Gara was as bad as they come, caring for nothing but himself growing up, and yet this very same person you now condemn to be a demon saved this village from annihilation. Said Tamari while her siblings glared daggers at them all. It just proves Naruto is a monster if Gara is just like him, said Sakura before killer intent from Gara shut her up. Foolish girl. Who was it that saved you from my deathly grip? Who was it that defeated me in combat during the invasion of your village? It was Naruto. For that act alone and for siding with the Achiha after the fool nearly killed my first real friend. The alliance between our two villages is hereby terminated. Tamari. Kankuro. We are leaving, said Gara coldly while his eyes glared daggers at them all before the siblings left. Thanks, Gara. I'll pay you back someday, my friend. I promise, thought Naruto before he took off and managed to get over the village walls. Never to be seen again for many years. As the Emperor of the Western Elemental Empire. The Imperial Palace of the Western Elemental Empire of Kyoto was an impressive sight to behold for all those with eyes could see its majestic almost glowing beauty, and even more so when one looked inside to see the decor. Crimson carpeting edged with golden lining filled each floor of the palace, the sides of the floor not covered were showing high quality wood, and the walls had rows of doors leading to different rooms. Where there wasn't doors, there were paintings on the walls, and each depicting the empire's greatest of heroes. Each of them fought beside the emperor, bled for the man, and liked them. The emperor did too. Each picture was commissioned to show their greatness, to show their loyalty to the man they followed and help unite the lands ravaged by war. Among these paintings. The emperor of the west himself. Of course, the portrait itself had never revealed his face as he wore a golden fox-shaped helmet with face cover but designed to make sure it didn't impede his line of sight and wearing crimson black armor. A sword in hand, stained in the blood of his fallen enemy, and the torn flag of the empire on a pole, looking like it was fighting against a heavy wind in the chaos below. Guards could be seen everywhere, watching every area of the palace, shinobi hiding in the shadows to provide additional support for them, and each servant walking without fear through the halls to do their duty. At the moment, the emperor of the western elemental empire was now in an important meeting with the grand council, which was made up of his most trusted advisors, who handled their regions they once fought each other over, and to keep out of the hands of some of the very people in the room. That had been put to an end by the emperor, as he fraught his way through the masses upon his arrival, making a name for himself in what was the known as the divided western wars and, and brought others to the table for peace talks when violence would make things worse. As his power base grew, the emperor's reputation spread throughout the west as different warlord and leader of different guilds that did not wish to fight, requested an audience with him. Within a span of three years, the man had accomplished what no other person had done before and it was bring peace to the west under his guiding hand. The peace that had lasted for three long wonderful years after being made emperor. Warlords, who had once led their armies into battle to fight each other for additional land and power, now served the emperor with undying loyalty. The guilds that once worked in the shadows now worked to serve the emperor to keep the peace and stability the man himself had bled for during the fighting. How's everything along the southern border of the empire Louis Bay? 
I had heard there was some kind of disturbance there. Said the emperor in a muffled voice while wearing his mask, which while normally would be removed in a meeting like this among his most trusted advisors, was not to be, as he had business elsewhere after this, and with people that did not deserve to see his true identity. Some bandits have been harassing some of regions near the port region. I've sent Pang Tong and a regiment to handle this accordingly, said Louis Bei, as he saw his emperor nod in approval of the decision and looking over some documents pertaining to the situation. The Shu region was once divided into multiple ones ruled mostly under Wu and Wei, with all three sides forming an uneasy balance between each other. However, that all changed when the emperor came when he was still a warlord by right title and had his agents observe all sides before choosing which one would be worthy of his support. Out of all the three main powers, Shu had the most honorable, and Liu Bei had the support of the people in his region, more than the others did. At the Battle of Fan Castle, Liu Bei's sworn brother Guan Yu was trapped on both sides by Wei, and then Wu in a surprising move, had sided against Shu in the battle. Guan Yu and his army would have perished in the battle, had the emperor not intervened in flanking Wu with his forces long enough for Liu Bei's army to arrive to send Wei retreating. After that, Xu became an allied with the emperor, and together they had defeated Wu before the side sent Zhu Yu to negotiate peace. The emperor handled the negotiations with his chief advisor between Xu and Wu, with both becoming one under Xu's banner while being allied at the time with a warlord that would soon be emperor. Together, they took down Wei and renamed the entire area the Xu region. Good. I will not have my people harassed by bandits. Though I am curious as to why you sent Pang Tong. The man is a well-renowned strategist and to send him seems to be overkill. Said the emperor, while Louis Bei nodded. I agree, but the regions being attacked are well known to Pang Tong, and I would prefer to send one of my trusted generals with knowledge of the terrain against the bandits to remove this annoyance, said Louis Bei with the emperor, again nodding in agreement. I agree. You chose wisely Louis Bei. It shows you care about your people within the Shu region a great deal. Sesameru, how are things going in your territory of the empire with the various demons and half-demons living there? said the emperor, as the regal demon lord of the west, had been a hard man, or rather demon to win over. The two had fought in battle, fiercely in the final years of violence the west received, and the emperor had barely come out of it alive, while Sesameru was just weakened. It did not end for the emperor however, as rival demons of Sesameru saw their chance to kill the demon lord in his weakened state, but surprisingly, their plan was foiled by the chief advisor of the emperor, and had been ordered to stay on the sidelines watching until that point. When it was over, Sesameru himself was surprised at just how the emperor had gained someone so powerful by his side, and through all that did the demon lord of the west, join the cause to end the violence. They are going well. There are no new changes to report in my region, said Sesameru calmly while seeing the emperor nod. Good. General Iroh, how are the new fire division troops handling the different kinds of training sessions and drills you set up for them? Said the emperor to the semi-elderly man smiled at him. They are doing well my emperor. The fire division troops will be ready for anything that comes our way should the conflict in the east spread here, said Iroh, as he had been put in charge of the training of the troops alongside his younger brother Ozai, and to help in the defense of the wall, the separated the two sides. My emperor, our reports from the spies you ordered to head for the east have reported back that the violence there is escalating drastically, and I fear the threat of being invaded by the arrogant forces there is looming in the shadows of the future, said Zhu Yu, who was a key strategist in the territories to the northeastern region of the empire and had been put in charge of the fortifications there with several of his well-respected generals. The eastern side of the continent. Such a bane on this world those fools at the top have become on their side. Only a select few of them are level-headed but are being threatened by the warmongers, and it doesn't help that they are allies of mine. Prime Minister Zhu Liang, I seek your counsel on this matter and your insight into the future. Will the wars in the east spill into our borders? said the emperor seeing the sleeping dragon himself, a former general of Louis Bay, now appointed prime minister of the empire, for his years of service to two of the most honorable men he ever met and served in his life. Slowly, the master strategist rose to his feet, the peacock feather fan in his right hand, and walked over to the large map showing both sides of the continent, with a dark line running north to south where the wall stood. The man gazed at it with half-closed eyes as he ran his weapon of choice over the map and making a humming noise like he was examining something no one else could see. The winds of change blow heavily around us. Even in these years of peace granted to us by you my emperor. War increases in the east while ours has only just ended and peace being achieved here in the west. The wall, forged years ago and sustained for centuries now has been the main reason our side has not flooded the region with our own brutality. However, peace will not be forever and it should not be expected to stay peaceful here in the west. 
We must always prepare for outside forces, never become arrogant in the belief no one from the East can oppose us, as I along with the rest of us here, have all learned how the East is filled with surprises, and yet most of these surprises cannot be expected to always be good. Said Zhu Liang, while the others chuckled along with the Emperor. So we should prepare for the flood that is to come from the storm, said the Emperor, who saw Zhu Liang nod his head. Yes. We must prepare for the worst and hope for the best, said Zhu Liang before he sat back down, while the emperor closed his eyes and thought. Each of you will return to your respected territories, inform all of your officers, and the troops that their training is to be doubled from the standards currently set. General Iroh, I'm giving direct command of the Dai Li Earth Division Defense Troops over to you, and the Fire Division Troops over to your younger brother Azai. Sephiroth, I want your own soldier division to be twice as strong since I last saw them several months ago, for when I see them next, said the emperor, while seeing the tall man next to Sesameru smile slightly and nod his head. They will meet all the expectations you would have set for yourself my emperor, said Sephiroth in a smooth voice. I have no doubt about that. This meeting is now officially over, said the emperor, while the council members rose, bowed, and left the room one at a time to return to their own territories to give out orders. The intelligence report you had me gather just came in, said a figure wearing spiky red hair and appearing from the shadows wearing crimson red samurai armor. Is this accurate? Down to the last detail. Said the emperor with narrowed eyes as he took the report and read each line. I'm afraid so, said the samurai sadly, while the emperor crushed the paper in his hand. Hinata. Even her love for me does not go unpunished by those arrogant fools. Said the emperor while shutting his eyes and shook with an intense rage. I'm sorry kid. It's my fault they hate you. Without me, you'd be living a much different lifestyle, and things would be so much different in the leaf, said the samurai, while the emperor just chuckled. And be as weak and arrogant as them. No. I'd choose this empire over the leaf any day at any time. Now that think about it. You haven't called me that name in years QB, said the emperor, while the demon fox let out another chuckle. I know. Force of habit when comes to you and me. Naruto, said QB while the man behind the mask removed it and the matured face of Yuzumaki Naruto was revealed. His hair was still a spiky blonde, the face was the spitting image of the Yandai Mei, the whisker marks thin, almost non-existent, unless seen under a bright light setting, and eyes that were an intense blue that made even the battle-hardened warrior in the West no fear. For three years after his banishment, Naruto had made his way to the West, gotten over the wall, and started from scratch in making himself known. The Yuzumaki brat, who no one in the West took seriously had beaten, killed, and in certain cases negotiated his way to unifying the western side of the continent under his banner. Bring an Ezio and Alter. I need to speak with them, said Naruto before putting on his mask. Now? You're going to be late for the airship Princess Koyuki provided for transport to her country to have some of your fighters participate the Tejutsu tournament there, said Kyuubi with a frown. It will just be a moment. Besides, this is important, said Naruto seeing QB nod and left the room to come back later with the two individuals. You summoned us my emperor. Said Alter knowing this was important and was ready to devote the whole of his half of the assassin's guild to the emperor's wishes. Yes Alter I have. As you know, the east is spiraling out of control. War is inevitable no matter how you look at it. However, the intensity of such a stupid attempt is the only real thing we have control over at this point, and to weaken the war machine that will threaten the peace we have fought so hard achieve, said Naruto with both grandmasters of the Assassin's Guild nod their heads. Each grandmaster was assigned half the Assassin's Guild, each one bound in a bond of brotherhood sealed in blood before the eyes of the Emperor himself, and each one swore never to turn one side of the guild against the other. They acted as one, yet they worked individually as two, but both reported everything to the emperor, and neither one dared to keep anything from the man. You wish to use the brotherhood against the war machine of the east, said Ezio seeing Naruto nod his head. Yes. I've had agents from the thieves guild and headmistresses running the brothels in the east to keep tabs on them. The major warmongers are Iwa with the backing of the earth daimyo, Kumo with the back of the lightning daimyo, and finally Orochimaru of the Sanin. Each one has been fighting other places, territories, and raising all kinds of hell in the east. Not to mention the Akatsuki are also going around trying to find other Jinchuriki for their own plans with no success, said Naruto with both men frowning at him. With all due respect my emperor, but aren't most of the Jinchuriki, aside from Sabaku no Gara and Killer B of Kumo here in the empire? Said Alter seeing Naruto nod again. But they are. The only one unaccounted for is the former Mizukage of the Mistigura, who was slain by the rebels, and his demon was taken by the Akatsuki, said Naruto, as he had saved most of his fellow Jinchuriki, and even freed them of their demons. Both human and demon from each one were currently living deep within Sesameru's territory. Living their lives happily while still training to get stronger per the demon lord's request, since he didn't want weak people in his region of the empire. Naruto agreed. 
After the Akatsuki attacked Tsuna for Gara's demon, it had been Naruto's wish to see them thwarted, and did so by sending Shinobi from the Hayabusa Shinobi village to remove the pair of Akatsuki members from the equation. Rick Hayabusa led his squad of dragon shinobi to Suna, revealing the imperial seal to Gara's siblings, and explained they came to protect the Kazikage under the command of the emperor himself. That Gara was one of the few friends the emperor still had in the east, and fulfilling the personal promise of paying the Kazikage back for sticking up for him when it mattered most three years ago in Konoha. By that point, Gara understood just who the emperor was, and requested to Rick that he inform the new ruler of the empire that Suna would like to have an alliance with him. Naruto had embraced the alliance with Suna without any hesitation and further secured Gara's protection against the Akatsuki by making a secret visit to Suna to alter the man's seal to prevent forceful extraction of the biju. Normally, Naruto would have tried to take Shukaku out of Gara like QP had, but the insanity was sadly irreversible after so long, and Gara was not about to risk the lives of people in his village. In the event of Gara's life ending, whether be natural or other causes a special seal was put on him to inform the empire of such a thing, before giving the siblings another one to hold on to, so Shukaku could be resealed away into jar like he had been before in a kettle. By that point, an imperial shinobi would arrive, take Shukaku in his newly sealed home to the empire, to be kept someplace under guard, to ensure the insane raccoon could do no further harm to anyone. How will we set up our assassin guild bases within the shinobi villages? or the even the capital of the countries with the assigned targets. Said Ezio knowing the assassin guild bases require discreet and slow movements. They are already set up. You see, I had them set up when your predecessors, both of your predecessors were still alive and ready to pass the torch, said Naruto shocking the two. Why weren't we told about this beforehand? Said Alter seeing Naruto shrug. Because at that the time, I was hoping this contingency against the East wouldn't be put into motion, and I needed there to be experienced members of the Brotherhood that know the lay of the land in each area. You two have both been to the East before, but never on an assassination mission, and never so high level. Each of you will be assassinating a Kage or a Daimyo of the assigned country. I am sending you two and several of your brothers to help in the removal of those that can protect them, said Naruto seeing the two not in agreement. What about Orochimaru of the Sanin? With his allies gone, he can easily pick up the pieces and become an even greater threat, said Ezio seeing Naruto nod. I know. He will be dealt with in another manner. While Orochimaru is not a threat to the West like his ego would wish him to be, the man is not to be underestimated and given his own affinity for acting like a snake. It only reinforces the point that an assassin will not be used against him. This is in no way an offense aimed at the guild, but assassins are not trained to fight someone like him, and I won't have your brothers be sent to their death before being dissected like lab rats for the man's sick experiments, said Naruto with the two grandmasters nodding in agreement. We accept your reasoning and obey your command my emperor, said Alter Bowing and Ezio doing the same. Your words are wise and true, said Ezio before the two left the room to carry out their orders. Naruto, we can't wait any longer, said QB seeing Naruto nod and stand from his seat in the room. Is all the registration of our fighters gone through the proper channels to compete in the tournament in spring country? Said Naruto, as he walked with QB, and the demon fox nodded before putting on a fang mask and kept his own whiskers from being seen by those in the east. Yes. Though I must warn you Naruto to keep your emotions in check when seeing the leaf shinobi participating in the tournament, said QB seeing Naruto nod. I shall. The report you gave me regarding. Her tells me she will be there too. This will be the only chance I get to set her free before. Before said Naruto while QB put a comforting hand on the blonde's shoulder. Before her marriage to Inuzuka Kiba, said QB wanting to puke when saying those three words in a single sentence. Marriage? Ha. It's a joke. She'll be his slave and all, but name at that wedding, and no one in the village gives a damn. Not her so-called family, friends, even her own former sensei just. Pats Hinata on the head while smiling saying it's going to be all right Hinata when everyone knows deep down in the depths of their souls, it is not all right. Said Naruto, as he kept walking and getting angrier with each passing second. I've already spoken to your bodyguards. They are the best at what they do, said QB, as he saw Naruto nod and knew his former vessel would have his aching heart finally be soothed. It had suffered for too long already. Anoha at the moment. Tsuna Day sighed heavily, her workload of papers assigning missions from D to A rank missions had not dwindled in the slightest since taking office, as the Leafs Hokage and the war with two different shinobi villages along with Orochimaru didn't help either. To make matter worse, Tsuna had ended their alliance with Konoha, Wave Country had torn up their trading contract, followed by Spring Country, telling the Fire Daimyo any deals she made with him were hereby terminated. In fact, every place Naruto ever went to for a mission and made an impression to the people in charge there had cut off all ties with the leaf. 
It caused a horrible backlash, which Konoha had not recovered from since, and the fire daimyo had been less than pleased with him. The feudal lord had brought an army of with him, stormed into the Hokage Tower, into a meeting ironically regarding Konoha's future, and looked ready to order the execution of every single person in the room. Flashback four months after Naruto's banishment. The door to the room shattered. Splintered into pieces after being kicked by two samurai with the fire daimyo symbol on their shoulder armor. The Hokage, the councils, and the clan heads saw the room start to fill up with samurai before the fire daimyo himself entered the room. And he did not look happy. Daimyo-sama. What do we owe the pleasure of your visit? Said civilian councilman in charge of the merchant guild in the market district. Pleasure. For the past few months, I have been feeling everything else, but the feeling of the word you call is pleasure my esteem leaf councilman, and it has made me oh so very. Unhappy. Said the fire daimyo with his anger showing on his face, and on that of his own samurai too. What reason is that sir? Said Hamura starting to rise, but a glare from the fire daimyo immediately made him sit back down and see the feudal lord begin pacing. Do not insult my intelligent shinobi councilman Hamura. You know damn well what has been causing me discomfort these past few months. First, I hear that Suna had ended its alliance with a leaf, then I hear from the wind daimyo, who is a good dear friend of mine, that he has expressed his full support of the Kazika Gay's decision and has banned leaf shinobi from entering his country. Of course, little did I know, that was just the start of my displeasure and would certainly no be the last. A week later, Spring Country has sent a message from the Spring Daimyo herself to my office, informing me she's cutting off all form of trade with my country, have asked Wave Country to do the same, and do you know what happened in less than week later in my office? I get yet another message from the Wave Daimyo and according to him. The people of Wave have agreed to do the same. Now, at first glance of this happening in a slow, painfully, and unexpectedly. It seems to be from something I may have done. So, for then next few weeks, I'm looking back on everything I have done recently that could be the cause of this displeasure and find that I have done nothing wrong. So I decide to rethink what the problem is by looking at the various places that have expressed their scorn for my country and one thing popped up. Do you know what that one thing was? Or rather. Who that one person was? Said the fire daimyo before taking out his fan and waving it at his face. Perhaps you could enlighten us daimyo-sama, said Danzo though he already knew the answer. I'm afraid Buddha himself could enlighten anyone in this room even if the light from the sun was at his command. Still, perhaps the name of the individual who has been the key focal point of these different places and their discomfort on a certain action you took a few months ago. I believe you are all well acquainted with a former leaf shinobi by the name of Yuzumaki Naruto. Said Fire Daimyo and as expected the people in the room yelled out like children. A demon. I knew he was involved in this. Said a civilian councilman. We should send out Anbu or Jiraiya to remove that pest from this world once and for all. Said Kaharu to the Hokage, while completely ignoring the fire daimyo at this point. Enough. Yelled the fire daimyo with his yell actually shaking the room and his face looking red with anger. Daimyo-sama. Said Tsunade, as she saw the man was glaring at her and knew things were really bad. Do you think I came here, with my army in tow, and say without fear of reprisal from my neighbors that I support your decision to banish Uzumaki Naruto? Fools. I am here to inform you that I oppose your decision, said the fire daimyo, which made the officials of Konoha looking at him in shock and clearly did not expect this. You're not. Said Tsunade, while the fire daimyo's glare increased. No. In fact, I've come alter your ruling on his banishment and at least appease some of my former allies to the point where they will not consider being my future enemies. Said the fire daimyo while glaring at the entire room. What change are you making? Said Tsunade seeing the man turn his attention directly to her. For one, Yuzumaki Naruto is not going to be harmed by any leaf shinobi in this village, should he ever step foot in my country, or is spotted by any leaf shinobi for that matter. Two, the order to have him executed should he ever step foot in the village for whatever reason is hereby nullified and will continue to be until I say otherwise. For those of you who don't understand what that last part means, I'll explain it to you in a way everyone here can understand and comprehend with their pea-sized brains. If one Yuzumaki Naruto comes into this village, into this tower, into this room, and kicks every single one of you right between the legs regardless of your gender. You have to take it with a smile on your faces. No excuses. Said the fire daimyo seeing the Hokage, the councils, and all the clan heads go pale in the face. You can't be serious daimyo-sama. The boy is the QB reincarnated. He harmed the Acheha. He had to be banished and still has to be punished. Said Hamura in protest to the feudal lord himself. Enough. I can't stand the sight nor wish to hear any more from this old crone or any of his supporters. Though what I can't stand more of than anything else. Is the sight of the current Hokage, who betrayed her own godson and all for doing his assigned mission. 
a dangerous mission he was recruited for by your appointed squad leader and completed it down to the letter by bringing back the rogue Ichiha, said the fire daimyo, while seeing the woman not looking him entirely in the eyes. He hurt the Ichiha badly. The poor boy was influenced by the curse seal, and yet the demon nearly killed him said Kaharu, but any further protest in her mouth died from another glare from the fire daimyo, and stayed quiet. Funny you should mention that. I have it on good authority from an anonymous source that the injuries Yuzumaki Naruto received were far worse than the Ichiha's own. As for the curse seal, why didn't Jureya of the Sanin cut it off entirely from the Ichiha in the first place, or remove the boy from the shinobi program until a solution to the matter was found? Why allow it to thrive and grow? Said the fire daimyo seeing no one willing to answer him. Anzo and Tsunade were wondering who the anonymous source was. It has to be someone with access to his medical records. Not many people on that list, but who would lend a sympathetic ear to Naruto and usurp me to tell the fire daimyo about both boys' injuries. Thought Tsunade seeing the woman sigh in frustration. Since no one here can give me an honest answer, much less an honest one, I am forced to yet again appease my neighbors and prevent my country from being invaded due to your stupidity. I understand Ichiha Sasuke is still recovering from his injuries said the fire daimyo seeing Tsunade nod. Yes. He's going to be out of action for at least a few more months before training for him can begin again, said Tsunade with the fire daimyo frowning. Only few months. Pity. I was hoping he'd out of it a little while longer. Though given how this village gives him the royal treatment, as if he was me or one of my children. I imagine you are personally overseeing his road to recovery. Ichiha Sasuke will not be ready for training after a few months, said the fire daimyo seeing Tsunade frown. I'm Yosama. Said Tsunade, while seeing the anger in the man swell further. Ichiha Sasuke won't be training for the next three years. That means no lessons in the way of Tojutsu. No lessons in chakra control. Teaching him Jutsus and anything else that is shinobi related. If there is so much a way for a shinobi to kill someone with just the tip of his fingernail, it will not be taught to the Ichiha, and if I find that is the case. The boy will be executed publicly before everyone in the village with everyone in the room soon following said the fire daimyo before leaving the room. He can't do this. Said Danzo furiously. He can and will Danzo, said Tsunade before Jureya made his usual appearance via the window. Is this a bad time? Said Jureya with Tsunade scowling. You could say that. Why are you here? Said Tsunade, as she didn't have time for his shit, whether it was perverted or otherwise in whatever it is he does in life. To bring more bad news I'm afraid. I was aware of the fire daimyo's decrees before he came here and decided to track down Naruto in order to bring him back home here, said Jiraiya, while having a look on his face that told them it didn't go according to plan. Seeing as how the demon brat's not with you, I take it the mission was a failure and he managed to escape, said Tsum, as she saw Jiraiya grimace and run his hand through his hair. You could say that. I found out he went west. Towards Iowa, said Jiraiya with Hamura scoffing at this news while Tsunade's eyes widened. Did he go directly to Iowa? said Tsunade while Jureya shook his head no. Then Kami I can say the answer is no to that question. But what he did so was either very foolish or suicidal in my mind, said Jureya seeing confusion on the faces of those around him. What did the QB Jinchiriki do? Said Danzo knowing that he would send his root forces to find the boy. Naruto. He. He went over the wall, said Jureya seeing Tsunade begin to panic. You mean the wall that leads to the west? Said Hiashi knowing why that place was off limits for a reason. The very same. Naruto summoned Gamabunta and told him everything. It's why I wasn't here sooner before the fire daimyo to give you the heads up. Gamabunta has declared the people of the leaf unfit to be protected by the toads. He's calling for every summons in Kanoha to break their contracts with us. He already did it with me, said Jureya seeing the shock on their faces. They wouldn't. Who will summon them if not us? Said a civilian councilman seeing the Sanin shrug. I don't know. Though in their mind, anyone not tied to Kanoha is probably better than us right now at this point, and if anyone from the Leaf tries. Gamabunta promises there to be some major retaliation, said Jureya, while Tsunade looked grim. Jureya, you are going to head over to the west, find Yuzumaki Naruto while there, and upon doing so will bring him back home. Said Tsunade knowing the only way to make things partially better for the Leaf is if the brat was back in Kanoha. After everything that's happened. The kid's not exactly going to be jumping with joy at the news of being allowed to return, only because it's only to help the leaf. The younger generation will be out for blood should Naruto come back here, and we both know that was your fault to begin with by rescinding the Sandai Maze law, said Jureya with a female Hokage growling. I don't care how you do it Jureya, but one way or another I want that brat in my office to become a shinobi again. Even if it means we have to erase all his past memories and starting from scratch said Tsunade knowing that was always a possibility at this point in time. 
Me? Go over to the west. Soon a day, you don't seem to understand something about that side of the continent, and what you fail to understand is the west is not a very friendly place for anyone on the side. Period. I may be a Sanin, but there are beings over there that will crush me with a flick of their wrist, and I have no contacts over there to help me even find a strand of hair from his head, said Jureya Singh soon a day and the others looked down in defeat, because they knew it was true. For all their strength and reputation built here in the east. It was the west that had the real muscle. Fine. Focus on the Achiha for now by getting that damn curse seal off his body. The last thing I need is for Arachimaru to make a second attempt and using that thing to make it possible, said Tsunade seeing Jureya nod. Will do Haim, said Jureya, as he would have to research his former teammate's personal handiwork and see just how much of the damn thing was really influencing Sasuke. Then flashback. Our contestants along with their former senseis are on their way via boat to Spring Country, said Jureya, having sent Lee, Niji, Sasuke, Kiba, and Hinata, though the poor girl wasn't competing per orders of her father. She was there to support her future husband and get married upon their return home. Good. The prize money will help keep Kanoha funded, said Tsunade, knowing there were budget cuts being made by the fire daimyo, and missions had been a state of an unstable flux as of late to get a stable income that way. I heard the Kanoha Maru Corps are going to be nominated for the Chunin exams this year. Why? Said Jureya seeing Tsunade glaring holes into him. Because they still support Naruto and the exams are in Suna this year. I figured Gara would give them a descent enough welcome, since they don't hate the damn brat for being a Jinchuriki, said Tsunade, seeing Jureya nod his head, knowing that was a good enough move as any she could make right now. That and you want their sensei Asuma to report on the rumors of Suna having some kind of connection to the West. Just like this tournament you signed our shinobi up for was meant to see if Spring has also acquired ties to the West, said Jureya seeing Tsunade smirk a bit. Am I that see-through? Said Tsunade while Jureya smirked back. No. Not really. That could change if you wore a very wet white shirt, said Jureya with a perverted grin before being sent through a wall via Tsunade's fist to his face. Irobaka. Said Tsunade knowing what he was implying. Underground Route HQ. Is this accurate? said Danzo looking at his Anbu captain with a single narrowed eye. Yes, Danzo-sama. The Emperor of the West is traveling via airship to the East to see his own fighters competing in the tournament, provided by the Spring Daimyo herself. Said the rude Anbu captain, while sensing the man's displeasure. This Emperor believes himself untouchable. He's a threat to me and Kanoha, said Danzo while wishing he could get a picture of the man, but knew that wasn't possible until now, and even then it was rumored the Emperor wore a mask helmet to keep his identity a secret. Plus, there was no way of telling if the man on the airship now was the actual emperor or some fanatical stand and prepared to die for the ruler of the West. Danzo didn't want to risk the failure of another assassination attempt like he did several years ago, shortly after word reached him of the regions of the West beyond the wall, had become one under a mysterious emperor. Danzo had wanted that place to stay divided, as he knew that while alone they were stronger than most of the East, but merged together into a greater whole, would make them a threat to the East and to his plans for ruling Kanoha as the Hokage. His agents were sent back in pieces, broken down to fit in square boxes in the middle of the night, and found in the morning by the patrols that day in the middle of the village square. Soon a day had inquired to the use of Root Shinobi being used, but Danzo was able to explain it, as his security force hunting down someone entering his home, and that this foe had skills capable of defeating his private security forces. His pawns on the councils had done their job well in sweeping the issue under the rug, but it made Danzo become forced into being more careful and to not make the same mistake twice. I sent a squad of some of my personally trained root shinobi. Clearly the ones working for the emperor had a great deal of skill thought Danzo, as he knew the emperor was not interested in war at the time of the attack, which was why the warhawk got away with just the dead root shinobi, and that their bodies being sent back to the leaf was a warning to not try it again. Should we try again Danzo-sama? Perhaps a means of sabotaging the airship itself when the emperor heads back home. Said the Anbu captain before seeing Danzo narrow his eye at him. No. Kanoha Shinobi are already participating in the tournament, and even I must admit the prize money would help the leaf in our economic state. When they return, we will have a description of the emperor, and hopefully a description of his face to go with the man's identity in the process, said Danzo, knowing there was no point in letting his side do the same work, soon a day Shinobi were going to do before sharing the information in the first place. Spring country sometime later. We've arrived my emperor, said the elderly figure softly with his still dark hair pulled in a tight ponytail, wearing a butler uniform and dark gloves to match. Thank you Walter. How are the others? Said Naruto seeing his personal butler, servant and bodyguard aside from QB himself standing at attention barely five feet from him. 
ready to fight for you in this tournament my emperor, and they promise to make sure to make you proud, said Walter, knowing these fighters from the empire were among the best in Tejutsu and chosen for that fact. Well some were chosen for another more. Covert reason. Good to hear. All I ask is they do their best in this. And to kick the crap out of any leaf shinobi they fight in it, said Naruto with a smirk, which Walter joined him in sharing and nodding in agreement. They are aware of such things. They will show these young fools a lesson in true in the way of violence, followed by humility, and by making them know of such things by the way of humility's nearly identical twin brother humiliation. Said Walter while well sensing his emperor was pleased to hear it. Let's not keep our host waiting, said Naruto before standing and walking out of the room with Walter following on his right, while QB did the same on his left. Spring Country Stadium. The people gathered to see the tournament their daimyo was sponsoring. Rumors of the Western Elemental Empire sending fighters to participate and event he emperor himself coming too. Everyone knew the emperor was an ally of Spring Country, after peace over the wall had been heard, and many feared the great dragon that had awakened in the process of the unity. However, according to the rumors, the Spring Daimyo met with the emperor, who had requested an audience with her through unknown channels, and she agreed if only to satisfy her own curiosity. No one knew what was spoken between them or the man's true identity on account of the man keeping his face hidden from everyone. However, the daimyo of Spring Country had a smile on her face by the time it was over, and it was one many had not seen, since their long-lost hero had helped free them from the tyrant Dodo. When asked by one of her samurai guards why she was once again smiling, Koyuki merely replied, our long-lost hero is no longer lost, and didn't stop smiling for the rest of the day. As the Emperor of the West made his way to the booth where Spring Daimyo Koyuki was waiting for him, the crowd of people that were in the stands near them hushed at the sight of the Emperor and his bodyguards. Each of them walked with a purpose, walked like a veteran of war, their eyes showed they had seen battle, blood, and death in more ways than one. The Emperor walked the same way, his robe swishing around him in the wind, and his eyes behind the mask showed an incredible intensity that made everyone around them have more than enough healthy space to get by. Welcome Emperor of the West. I am honored that you've come all the way here from the Empire to see this tournament, said Spring Daimyo Koyuki, as she took his hand and shook it with a knowing smile on her face. The honor is mine. Your country flourishes under your rule. May it continue to do for years to come, said Naruto while smiling behind his mask. Thank you. Please it. The tournament is about to begin, said Koyuki, as she sat down with the Emperor and made a hand motion to inform her subordinate to start everything. Ladies and gentlemen. I am pleased to announce by the power invested in me by our beloved the Spring Country Daimyo that the Grand Tejutsu Tournament will now begin. Yelled the arena announcer with the crowd roaring and cheering. Do you hear that you guys? all those cheers. Once I win this tournament, I'm going to get fame, some fortune, and a nice piece of Hayuga tail that is my future wife, said Kiba, as he had been so excited since being informed that his former teammate, Hayuga Hinata, would be his wife and would have the cage bird seal on her forehead to further ensure her obedience to him without question. If you win Kiba. You are no match for an Achiha, said Sasuke arrogantly despite his inner anger at Naruto for beating him six years ago and then being deprived of training for the first three after the loss says the guy who was prevented from training for three years and curse seal locked away, said Kiba, while the others smirked and Sasuke growled. Just don't use the excuse of not having your dog for backup when you lose, said Sasuke while Kiba growled back this time. Such arrogance from weaklings makes me sick, said a voice behind them, and the leaf shinobi turned to see a man in white karate guy pants, shirt ripped along the shoulders, and red headband tied to his forehead. Who the hell are you? said Kiba while the figure crossed his arms in front of him. Name's Ryu. Hashi Ryu. I am one of the fighters participating in this tournament. You are fighters from the leaf. Correct. Said Ryu seeing Kiba puff out his chest and saw the others flexing what muscles they had. That's right. The best the elemental countries has to offer, said Kiba with Ryu merely smirking slightly. How sad, said Ryu simply before walking away. What did you say? Said Sasuke taking several steps forward. I said how sad and I say it. Because you are all weak, said Ryu before he continued to walk away. And what gives you the right to judge us? You're just a nobody wanted fighter. Said Sasuke, which made Ryu stop and look back at them. No Chiha Sasuke. It is you along with the rest of your fellow leaf shinobi here who are the wanted fighters and when compared to the rest of my fellow warriors from the west. You are the nobodies. Said Ryu before he continued walking. Jerk. I'm going to mess him up should we fight each other in this tournament. I bet the fighters from the west are all talk, said Kiba, while Niji just stared at Ryu for a second. He's dangerous. There is an aura of some kind buried deep inside of him thought Niji, as he used his eyes to track the man's movements and saw him stop in front of others no doubt from the west. 
Our first contestants will be Inuzuka Kiba from the Leaf and Hashi Ryu of the Western Empire. Would you two please enter the arena and we can begin the tournament? Yelled the arena announcer with the crowd booing Kiba and cheering on Ryu. What a bunch of ingrate assholes. We help their daimyo become their daimyo, and they boo guys like me. Said Kiba walking out with Ryu doing the same. Probably because of your village mistreating our emperor, you stupid fool thought Ryu, as he was going to look forward to crushing the Inuzuka in the name of the emperor, and remembered his orders to humiliate Leaf Shinobi. Not that Ryu would kill since that went against his own moral code, but given how bad things were in the west, killing did happen, and he had done if only to protect those that were precious to him. It was why he joined the emperor in the first place. The emperor had been uniting the lands, fighting cruel warlords, and talking with the more honorable ones joining him in the unification of the west. Ryu saw that the emperor was a man not unlike himself, and thus pledged his loyalty to the man during all of the fighting, to use his power to bring about peace to the west. Fighters. The rules are simple. One standing at the end of the match is the winner and advances to the next round. Killing is allowed, but we prefer it that you don't, and just knock out your opponent, yelled the announcer, so the crowd also knew the rules. Let's get this over with. I want to get back home to marry and plow my future Hayuga for a wife, said Kiba with a smirk on his face. In the stands, Hayuga Hinata shuddered in disgust at Kiba's words and dreaded the day she returned to Konoha. The trip over hadn't been pleasant either, having practically felt Kiba's leering eyes on her body the whole boat ride over and made sure to keep him at arm's length whenever near. Flashback. I don't know why you're acting like this Hinata-chan. We're going to be married soon anyway. We're on a boat, my room isn't that far away, and it wouldn't be difficult to start the inevitable early. So let's have our honeymoon early, said Kiba, as he was leaning on the rail with his back and staring at Hinata leaning over it with the front while keeping her arms crossed to keep the Inuzuka from seeing her chest, despite it being covered by a heavy coat. I'll pass on the offer Kiba-san, said Hinata in a stiff Hayuga tone almost worthy of her father's praise. Almost. Her father would never praise the woman, no matter how perfect Hinata did in something. Your loss. Still, it's going to be fun for me when we're married and I'm having all those coats of yours destroyed. You're not going hiding that chest from me, said Kiba, while failing to keep his grin off his face, knowing this girl was going to be shown like a prize to every guy in the village and to let everyone know Hinata belonged to him. Do not presume to dictate what I can and cannot wear in Kiba-san. I may become your wife, but it will be a loveless marriage and I will not make things easy for you, said Hinata before being grabbed by Kiba, who was no longer happy, but very angry, and it showed in his eyes. You still have a thing for that demon, don't you? After all this time, your heart still aches for him and wishes to be married to him. Said Kiba seeing Hinata's resolve not waver under his glare. And what if my heart does belong to Naruto? Said Hinata with Kiba growling. That's going to change the moment we're married. Do you understand me? When we're husband and wife that sweet ass of yours will be tattooed with my name on it. That way, even if you do leave, even if you do find Naruto and decide to become his lover like you have always wanted. My name there will forever know just who you belong to before him, said Kiba with a grin, but was ruined by a vicious palm strike to the gut by Hinata, and the blow sent the Inuzuka flying into the metal wall of the boat. Hinata. Said Kurinai seeing her former student do that to her own teammate. What? Said Hinata glaring at the woman she trusts to support her, but instead had just stayed quiet and done nothing. Apologize to Kiba, said Kurinai, while Hinata scowled at him. You want me to apologize? After what he said. Did. I'd sooner lick the railing said Hinata while her former sensei scowled back at her. He's your future husband Hinata. The nicer you are the less. Discomfort you will feel when married to him, said Kurinai while glancing at her forehead where her headband was and what lay beyond it. I'm going to be feeling all sorts of discomfort whether I'm nice to Kiba or not. We both know it. Said Hinata seeing Kurinai look away and knew the jown and also believed it. What was the point of being nice to someone when it wasn't going to be returned? Even still, you will have to be when the child is born, said Kurinai seeing Hinata suddenly radiate killer intent. As if I will ever give Kiba a child. I'd sooner destroy my womb with my own hands than give that arrogant perverted Baka one child from my belly from any so-called union we have together, said Hinata before storming away from a shocked Kurinai. You don't have a choice Hinata. Not this time. The one you want to be with isn't going to come back to Konoha. Not even he can't stop this, said Kurinai making Hinata stop. I don't care about that. No matter what happens while I'm married to Kiba, my heart and my soul will always belong to Naruto-kun. Nothing can change that. Nothing. Said Hinata while walking away from her former sensei. She didn't want anyone to see her cry. Then flashback. Intestants ready. And. Begin. Yelled the announcer with both sides cheering for the battle to fight. Suga. 
said Kiba, as he went forward on the attack against Ryu, who easily moved to the side, dodging the move easily, and didn't look impressed. This tournament is for fighters of skill. Not brawlers, said Ryu seeing Kiba snarl at him. Shut up and prepare to get your ass kicked by the alpha male of the leaf. Said Kiba, as he tried to get close and use his claws to tear into Ryu's flesh. He word being tried. Ryu dodged one strike after the next, no one was impressed with Kiba's brawling-like ways and even expressed it by booing the boy. Kurinai, Kakashi and Guy didn't understand why their fellow shinobi was being booed since the fighter from the west had barely done anything except dodge. I'm not impressed, said Ryu finally, as he easily caught Kiba's right hand at the wrist, broke it, and then followed up with the locating the Inuzuka's shoulder while spinning the man around so he landed on his back. A-H-H. Yelled Kiba as he soon found a barefoot smashing down onto that dislocated shoulder and could feel his muscles tearing. How do you want this to end Leaf Shinobi? To go home in pain with your arm attached. Or without it? Said Ryu as he pulled the arm further and made Kiba scream out further in pain. I give up. I give up. Said Kiba tapping the ground to indicate his submission to Ryu. Winner. Hashi Ryu. Yelled the announcer to make the crowd cheer at the victory Ryu gained for the Empire. If you are an alpha of the leaf, then your village is not as strong as you make it out to be, and none of your comrades will advance since they are weaker than you, said Ryu before letting Kiba's arm go, turned to the emperor in the stands above, bowed, and then left the arena. Bastard. Yelled Kiba as he charged forward with his one good arm cocked back, ready to thrust it forward to hit Ryu in the back. Foolish leaf scum. Hadouken. Said Ryu as he turned around and shot a blue fireball at Kiba that sent flying right off of the arena floor into the wall. Disqualify him said Kurinai while looking at the Spring Country Daimyo doing no such thing. The match is over Kurinai-san. Kiba attacked after it was declared officially over, said Hinata seeing Kurinai turn and scowl at her. Leaf Shinobi support each other no matter what Hinata, said Kurinai, which got her glare from Hinata, and the Hayuga girl stood up with her by Akigan active. Just as you supported Naruto-kun. You didn't support him when he was in the Leaf or when about to be banished. No one did, except for me, and put into an arranged marriage with Kiba because of it. You say Leaf Shinobi should support each other no matter what, but all that really means is to support Leaf Shinobi, who aren't Jinchuriki of the QB, or those that love the Jinchuriki. You and the rest of the Leaf Shinobi and Kanoha are all hypocrites. Said Hanada before storming away before Kakashi caught her hand. Hanada, where are you going? Said Kakashi before he found himself on one knee and his arm being twisted painfully to the point of breaking. That's none of your business and don't you dare touch me again Haddock. If you do, I'll take out that Sharingan eye and your balls for good measure, said Hanada coldly before she released him and walked away. Damn that girl's got a vice grip, said Kakashi clutching his arm. My emperor, the Hayuga girl is out of their line of sight, said Walter in a whispered tone, while seeing Naruto just nod like he was being asked a question and lifted his finger a single inch before a figure from the shadows moved undetected towards Hanada. It was time to set a bird free from her cage. I will stop here guys. That's it for today, hope you enjoyed this video if you do please leave a like share and subscribe, also stay hydrated guys, take care thanks for watching.